The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone, Basil Chapman on this Wednesday, the 5th of April. Well, into April. Uh, now we want to do a couple of things. Let's just go quickly through these uh, the, through the uh, technicals of the uh, different indices. So the Dow is holding well. It's up uh, 46 points at 33,448. It's been kind of the leader over the last couple of days, took over from the QQQ. Now what we've got is, um, look, this is the daily chart on the left, the weekly on, in the middle, and on the right is the monthly. Monthly still has a lot of work to do to break out of this re resistance line. And the same thing in the weekly chart, and you've got your support level, it's holding very nice. It's real close to having the pink move over the black uh, period moving average. That's the 9 over the 14 to go green, but it hasn't done it yet, and we've got another day and a half to go. So we're looking at the Dow with very good technicals on the daily, but it's stalled right at what was that midpoint. Remember, this is the channel that I spoke about, that long sideways channel. I could have extended it. I didn't, it started to get a little messy, but I kept that line. That line says we've stopped dead. We stopped under it at 33,572 uh, back in early March and then plummeted to 2,000 points to 31,472. 31,429 and then popped up to yesterday's high which was at 33,634. I'm anticipating just a fractional push above that level in the next couple of days just to complete this D which we usually get a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode and the Chapman wave methodology almost always goes to at least a D. You've seen how many Ds we had. We had a D back in February at the top. We had a D back in January at 34,342 as a top and we had a D and it quickly went to an E at 34,712 back in December. So I'm expecting that that should happen. But in the meantime, it's getting tougher and tougher. Look, the S&P, the S&P has gone to its D and it probably today is making a peak D. It didn't, let me just go back to this one here where I said I'm going to be a little conservative. And that says that it's gone above the one-to-one -one Chapman Wave falling axe breakout formation with the parallel uh, move at the same diagonal angle. Uh, it did go to a D, and now we've got to be real careful because unless the S&P, and it's a D underneath the previous peak, G, I do not like to see Ds form under previous highs because it means, unless you're coming off a major low, because it means that you haven't even got enough strength to get to maybe a C above that and then go to a D. It says you could be stalling out for a little bit. And that makes this 4,034 area where this little doji candle is really important. That's also where the 14 period moving average support is over the next week. If you're looking at a breakout, I see enough strength in the S&P with a stochastic at 94.6. That's fabulous. And flat, if it suddenly started to go, the moment it goes under 80%, that's a serious, serious thing. And it hasn't done that. So it says there's still some kind of support, some kind of residual strength. The QQQ is a little bit weaker, down 2.5 at 316.70. I said to my subscribers this morning, I'm a little concerned that the, uh, the semiconductors have failed. I put them together with the QQQ. Look, the QQQ is probably making a peak D today. The SMH is making a peak uh, F slash C. So it could be a peak F. Look, a sharp move down and a peak E in the weekly chart likely. And that's usually the leader of the markets. I, I'm real cautious right here. We've stepped back from doing buying. We did want to, we wanted to do a quick trade today, a potential trade on the three times long uh, TQQQ. That's along the Qs, just because there was a chance uh, that QQQ, even though it was in leg D, could in fact extend a little bit more to try to test that high. And it was just a real quick, a very tight. We got stopped out, I think something like a 1.7 uh, percent loss on a three times long. That's <laughs> it's amazing that you can have such a narrow uh, range, but it, either it worked or it didn't work, and it was only for traders. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, what I am looking at is that the IWM, which in a sense has been a little bit of a leader, that it couldn't get going at all, is down again today, down two 
at 173.30. This is not a good sign at all. So here we are. We're looking at a number of factors that are saying just be real careful. Look at this. The financials down again, down 12 cents at 31.79. You know, you include your Bank of America failing. It's down at 27.55. JP Morgan, really a, a very, very strong bank. Whoops, down, uh, down one at 127.00. Look at this. It couldn't even break above the 200 period moving average after such a sharp move down. I just say be a little cautious here. But there are areas that I'm noting that are, are starting to move very nicely. Now, within that context, gold has been spectacular. Gold actually is up again today. Oh, it just slipped down 2037. I think on a very short term basis, the unbalanced volume is suggesting that it's somewhat overbought. It should go back into the rectangle, probably go back under two. 2010. Uh, it's at 2037 right now, but it's fabulous action. We're looking at silver. I'm going to go to our caller. We've got a silver in a leg E. It's been much stronger. You remember, I like to pair them together. One follows the other, plays catch up, then the other starts to stall. I think gold is about to stall a little bit, and then silver should stall a little bit. I'm going to go to, I guess, let me just see here. We have, we have a real, we have George in Newport, uh, Richie. Florida. Hi, George. How are you? George? Uh, George, are you there? Said first time caller. So maybe you're not used to it, but I am um, only okay. Uh, all right. Well, I, I see, George, that you did want to speak about Bank of America. So in the meantime, I'm going to say to you, maybe you're there and you just, uh, uh, whatever it is. But just talk, as I'm talking, just say, I'm here so that I know you're there. But what I want you to say, actually, oh, I, maybe you got off the line because I already mentioned Bank of America. But let me do this again. Bank of America, I have considered for years to be a very strong company. And they, you know, when you go through to the the risk management and all that, they seem to be doing things right. We we've owned it for months, every year, and then we'd get out, we'd buy it at what I thought would be a low in the 31 or 30 under 30 area, and we'd it would rally very sharply. We'd get out on the way up and the way down, then we'd be out completely and just wait and wait and do it again. This is the first period in a long time that I haven't even thought about going to Bank of America. And that worried me about the XLF. And I love to see the X, the financials moving with the market, with the IYT, that's the transportation. I like everything to be in sync for a really serious bull market. So this has been a very selective bull market. So what I'm going to say to you is, if you're in Bank of America, I would do this. I would say, if you haven't taken anything off and you're a little bit worried about the, the risk I would say right here, 2766, just take a little bit off so it allows you to sleep at night. So just say, hey, I'm at least managing my bank. It's not managing me. I'm managing it. I'm taking a little bit off. That's if you if you have a loss. If you got in last week or so and now you have a little bit of a profit, I'd, I'd say, I'd still say the same thing. Take a tad off. But if it closes under 2632, what's the low? 2632 was the low uh, two weeks ago. Oh, uh, I'd just say be really careful because anything can happen at that point. So I'll, I'll be back and we'll talk about the banks in a moment uh, a little further, but there are a lot of things that I wanted to discuss as well. And uh, But hold on if you're still there. My engineer will, will work it out. Be back in a moment. Now is up 55, as it down 11. Divergence. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years of experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks. So it's also really good questions. I thank you. Uh, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Uh, and so let me just uh, go right here. I wanted to just mention something. Yeah, so... Um, uh, I'm not sure whether I answered questions that you had in terms of uh, the Bank of America trade. I believe you 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 hung up uh, because I'd already hit. I already touched on Bank of America first time call. I would have liked to have spoken to you, uh, George, uh, in Newport, Richie, Florida. But you can call again. Maybe next week. I'll be doing my show tomorrow at eight o'clock. I have to do it early. Um, so, with that said. Uh, another question came in about this Bank of America, and I'll do it right now. And that is, it, does the left side, right side price time match work in monthly charts? Well, you've seen it. I did it in, I mean, how many? Uh, yeah, let me just show you this. Look, TL, whoops, TLT, uh, you know, monthly charts. I do monthly charts all the time. Oh, I, I, I forgot you. I, I must have done it with the bonds. Um, yes, look at this. Here's your monthly chart, and I did this huge arch formation. I said, if I make my midpoint right there, it should go to um, February of 2023 and touch the low that was made right there back in August of 2013 of 108 and 23 30 seconds. Well, we did come down sharply, but I had done a one-to-one -to, -one to the October eight, uh, 2018 low of 123. Now, I don't know if this gets uh, smoothed out. Yeah, 125 was the low. So the numbers change only because uh, it gets smoothed out. So that was 125, and I did that, and I said I chose that particular candle right there. And what did we do? We broke it the exact left side, right side price time match to the bar that I chose. It wasn't the midpoint. It was a different candle. I had to do that because we were already moving to the right. So what happened is we, this is the month that I said it, would, it should hit right there. That was the shorter term one. And that was October of 2022. And we actually went a little bit lower. We went to 100. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It went to... Ah, it went to 118 and 21.30 seconds. Why? 
because the price was 125. So it went lower, but it did it in the same time match. So that's a great, uh, I've done this, you remember Exxon Mobil, I've done it with all these charts. I've got this left side, right side price time match. Exxon Mobil went to the exact 105 level, but 104.76 was lying in 2012. It went right there to that uh, price point that I thought it would hit. And it did that, and then it pulled back, and then it went even higher. Even now, it's holding beautifully. Look at this. This is a pure one-to-one -to, -one to the upside of the falling axe formation in the same angle, the degree. That's the whole thing about this Chapman Wave one-to-one -one extension. It goes in the same angle, the same number of bars. So let's go to Bank of America. That says, oh, I, I, I'm afraid to even look. I'm going to... Elizabeth, Elizabeth. 17.95 was the low back in February, I think it was March, March of 2020. It runs all the way to the 50 area, 50.11, had a Chapman Wave two bar reversal, and uh, that was in February of 2022, and now it's pulling back, and it says, I love to, if, I, if I'm being patient, and I see that the midpoint, if it's to the high that was made, extends a little too far, then I have to use different techniques, different Chapman Wave techniques. They're all techniques that I discuss in any of my webinars and any of my, my, if you go to my site and you go to any of those webinars, you'll see me talking about this left side, right side price time match. I call it bar symmetry. But you can see that that would take it, I'm taking it to this cluster and this cluster has a low of 22 points. Oh, I don't even want to say it, 22.39. Uh, back on July of 2020. So this is the cluster, and I always push right up against the wall. That that takes me all the way to there. I didn't have to go there. I could have go there, and it would have been uh, to to this low right here. That's the low of 11th. That's November of 2020, 23.27. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And it says by ooh, July, there's a chance we could hit that. And here's your Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line and that says but on the way if it holds 2540 at any point it could bounce off that level so absolutely Mr. Bull, a very nice question more importantly there look at the candle if we go into this wick uh in april there's a monthly chart and hold there and that wick says if we go to oh, we're almost there if we go under 27 then that 25 level is going to be, uh, that was made the low yet last month, will be very quick to be tested. So, yes, that's the reason why I'm very, I mean, very selective. And we have, we have, for instance, we have a stock, a particular stock we've taken a little bit off. We haven't got our second position yet. The second position will be bought lower than our original position. So, therefore, we want to take tiny little bits off to make some, some cash, some good profits in the meantime, so we can keep that as a cushion. But we have a stock that even today is up uh, one and a quarter percent. Uh, so I'm trying to go under the radar so that we can <clears throat> weather the storm. And there are other areas that I, I last night I started looking at them um, in the electricity area. I, I'm finding areas that I think are holding very well. That's not gold. Gold has been spectacular. So let me just do this before I forget. I had a question. I think it was Jane. Jane wanted to know about Tesla. When can I enter? Hold off. I like the action of Tesla on the weekly basis. The monthly chart doesn't look too great. The daily chart is making this arch formation. It failed to break above the 200 period moving average. It made a peak D at 208. Uh, yeah, 208.44 on the 17th. I may as well just type that in. 208.44 on the uh, 2, was it? Yeah, 2. I can't remember now what I said. I said 18th, I think. I'll, I'll change that if I'm wrong. Uh, okay, so it has a 208.44 high. Hold off a little bit. I think that Tesla is in the sweet spot in terms of the electric company, electric car companies for a number of reasons. But there are some factors that I'm looking at in the chart itself that says, I'm going to just go here for a moment. Some of you asked, Basil, you haven't looked at your uh, automated uh, support and resistance lines for quite a while. So let me just do that now. 
Uh, let me just, while I'm doing it, I want to go to natural gas because I think natural gas is attempting to form some kind of a, at least a tradable bounce, but it hasn't really. Look at all the, look, 1.94 is the continuous contract support there. Um, it's trading at 2.15. The, the weekly chart has gone under the 244 level. 207 is the 120-minute uh, chart support. And there's nothing in the monthly chart. So uh, all I can say, I, I just want to do that because I had a couple of questions. Could you look at UNG? I'll come back to it. So look, Tesla, I haven't seen this for a little while. So Tesla has 188 support, and it's under that. Is at 187 right now in the daily? A ton of resistance between 207 and 217. And in the daily, 205 to 224 in the weekly, but very little support is printed. Therefore, it's kind of open to the downside. And 186.64 in the 120-minute chart. Yeah, I, I think that test is just stuck for a moment, but I don't, don't ignore it. And it's good that you asked me the question. Let's see how it holds 180, um, 183. Pulls back under there. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I'm on my way to go to different businesses. Let me say that Alta, Alta, you know, I've spoken about this for a while. I said, we're going to watch it real close. It looked like it was in the topic, but then I drew in this falling X formation in the weekly chart. It powered through that. But... The whole thing is that the lower 501.04 wasn't the starting point of the latest buy, buy signal to buy mode, which was back in 19th of 19th and 20th of January at the 486 area. So what happened is once you go peak A, this is East dash A alternate count because it was an instant one, two, three. Yep, it was an instant restart. Gives you F slash B, G slash C I typed in. Then I said D and it went to an E with a doji candle. 
at 537.82. It opened at around number 532 uh, on the 5th of uh, 22nd of February. And then it gapped down. And then I said, okay, we're going to be watching this because Ulta Beauty, this is, you know, this is an area that beauty products, certain beauty products, they, they never get sold unless it's just a deep recession. And that recession goes on for a long time before. And look at the beauty of this whole beauty, uh, Ulta Beauty, is that, look, the monthly chart took one bar or two bars rest. And then it made a new high, one bar rest, new high, number, just get it over and over and over. Then it started to stretch it out until the last one at peak D, which was right on the March, I think, no, sorry, September high of 451.30. One bar rest, and then it breaks to a new high, and this is extended to a leg E. Now you can, this is a monthly chart. You can see the on balance one is extremely oversold, but the stochastic at 94% is flat. That's really good. And the MACD is good. The 9 is way over the 14. The price is over. Then you get to the weekly chart and you say, uh-oh, MACD is starting to fail. Stochastics at 80%, but it's much weaker than it was at that peak E. And here it is at leg F. Um, and then you get the breakout of this falling axe formation. It isn't a full one. Let me just draw it in so that you know what I'm talking about when I talk about these patterns. I've been talking about it for years because it isn't part of the regular vernacular uh, you won't know what I'm talking about unless I actually demonstrate it right here. Make this nice and fat so you can see it. I make it very fat. And I'll change it to, say, blue right there. And then I'll say copy, copy and paste. So copy it uh, right there. New parallel. Make it green because that's what we're looking at. And that extension says you, you can't go from that, that level the breakout level immediately you have to start off, and I usually start off either at a moving average or a gap or a doji candle or a trough, and that took me there. But if I go to the exact breakout, that takes you to 555, and what was the high yesterday? 553.06, and today is down 15. I'm watching this. I'm putting it together with the financials, Ulta Beauty, which is just your... You remember there was years ago I used to use, what was that, Mr. What was it, Mr. Tux? No, what was it? There was that um, clothing company. And I always used to, used to joke, they always say, um, buy one, we'll give you five for nothing. What was that? And then it was taken over by another uh, uh, um, men's, men's warehouse took it over. So what was that? It was, oh. I can't remember now, but it was this fantastic, this company, it was like, it was golden. It just went to higher highs and higher highs. Quite a, then I found out years later that what happened was that the owners, it was just a, a brothers or something, owner, and they would be buying shares all the way. They'd just keep buying and buying and buying, and they kept it supported. Well, Ulta Beauty, I don't know what they, is going on there. Uh, uh, fundamentally, I'm just saying, look at that beautiful buying, buying, buying. And now we'll see if it starts to pull back. And at any point in April, if it closes under 490, I mean, that's another 40 points below this, under, that's going to tell me, take this pullback in the market very seriously. At this point, something's up. It's down 2.85%, uh, down $15. Not a big deal. It is a big deal when you look at the chart, but not a big deal in this. Look, just a little red candle, the first red candle it's had in about six months in the monthly chart. All right, I wanted to mention that. Next thing, I've done Tesla. I said, hold off on Tesla um, because I might say to you, just your, once it starts to move up, I don't mind missing a move to the upside. I don't want to be buying the power move to the downside if this is a peak C failure. So if it does close under one, 183 in the next uh, week or so, then that low that was made at 162, was it 161.50? Was it? I can't remember. Oh, 163.90. That, that, that'll be a target for an H pattern. So I'd hold off. I don't think it's a rush, but I do think in many ways, in the overall spectrum of the, um, the electric car market, it's got a heads up. It's, it's there. It can pull prices down a little bit. And, and take away the pressure from other companies. Look at Ford, stuck at that 200 period moving average. Next question I had was, could I look at, I'm going now in sequence, MPC, MPC is uh, Marathon something, right? Marathon Petroleum Coal. Um, so this is different to M MRO. Uh, 
Oh, I used to have this all notated. Um, peak A, peak, let me just do that. Yeah, on the daily chart. Peak A, right there. There we go. And I said, I'm a little cautious about the uh, oil and oil service stocks uh, in this move with, with crude oil acting so well. Something's not quite right. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is an emotional response to something. So from this low here, yep, yeah, from this low in the month, in the weekly, it goes peak A, peak B, C, big moves up. And then it gets to a D, not quite so high, and it's starting to stall. I'd say just... I'd hold off right now, but if you're looking longer term, yeah, longer term, maybe if you want to start a small position and a long term position at 129.94 right now, I'd say, okay. But I, at this point, I would say wait a little bit. Next question was VLO, which is Valero, Valero Energy. Type it into the little box over there. VLO. Gosh, I haven't even had a chance to do my. The e minis, uh, which I wanted to do. So, this is stalling a little bit. A nice action today at 133.47. They both, this oil and gas exploration, they're both kind of in the same area. They have this pretty much, not quite the same charts, but uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of charts, which one is a better chart? MPC, um, Marathon Petroleum Corporation is a way better chart in the weekly and the monthly. Uh, VLO is way choppier. So I think uh, if I was to choose between the two, I'd say uh, MP, uh, yeah, I think so. I think that MPC is probably the better one. Um, and this one I, I'd hold off if I was, if you got both of them, that's one thing. If you got both of them, you need to see, it's at 133, you need to see by two and a half weeks' time for the monthly chart to improve, it needs to get to 145. 143 to 140, that's 10 points from here. Uh, but if it takes out 120 support, that's a real problem. Next question I had was, let's just go here. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, so you had the Alta, you still got those puts. Very congratulations, um, Alta, Alta Beauty puts. Yeah, I, I think that the, the downside is a little bit, is becoming more, more like a magnet. On, on Alta, the upside right now. I think there's an, a lot of upside uh, resistance. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. Yeah, so that's that. I just, I'm, I'm running. Oh, this is what I want you to look at CRWD, CrowdStrike. Uh, CrowdStrike is, had made a double top just the other day. I'm watching these really closely. This is the cybersecurity area. Um, Hmm, I need to talk about that. A number of people have asked me about it. I'll be there in a moment. Uh, Basil Chapman taking Christian's hour. Dow's at 56. SMB's down 13. We'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So, CrowdStrike, CRWD, this is Cyber CrowdStrike Holdings, Cybersecurity. Uh, CRWD trading at um, 127.89, down 8.97, down six and a half percent. Why? Because look at this: 138.33 uh, in March pulls back, makes this arch, this cup or V-shaped formation, and look what we we've got. We've got that high that was made um, with the MACD strongest it's been. In a long time, stochastic over 80%, uh, on balance volume had already started pulling back. Uh, that was on the th uh, 23rd of March, and then it pulls back, and then it holds the 14 period moving averages. Average rally sharply and goes to what? 138.67, all below the 200 period moving average, which is now repellent. Doji candle, uh, that was yesterday. The fifth, uh, the fourth of uh, April, and today's down sharply, and the MACD deflected lower. The stochastics now under 80 percent, 75 percent. The unbalanced volume is pulling back. This had better hold 119. Whoops. Uh, do one thing at a time. 124. It has to hold 124. The 50 period moving average, because if it doesn't, it's going to retest the lows that remain at 118.15 and 118.23 on the 10th and 11th. Of, uh, of March. So watch this closely. The weekly chart did improve a lot. Uh, so far, that's holding okay. But I'm watching this because this includes Hack, which is one that we've been looking at uh, very seriously. We've had it before. We got out of it. Looking, I, I had a choice of two particular uh, ETFs. I chose a different one and uh, left this one. Now this one's pulling back, and you can see it was stuck in a rectangle formation. I'll talk about rectangle formation in a moment, but you can see that it's, it's having a little difficulty trying to break out. So HACK is the cyber prime cyber security ETF for the security stocks, and it's being uh, hurt by CrowdStrike. Let's see what PA and APANW is doing, Palo Alto. Yeah, that's gone to AB. This is F G slash C. It's gone to a G slash C. It's actually holding much better, and it's a leg B in the weekly chart. This is really the this is the su supreme one. This is the this is the leader, um, right there A, and that's gray A. This is a F slash B, and I have an alternate counter because as you're getting higher and the technicals are starting to weaken, you have to be prepared that there could be a pullback. So I think it's just really time now to go to my uh, look, I talk about the um, narrow rectangle formation. We were in this narrow rectangle formation going to the top, to the bottom, 4122, 4118, 41, over and over and over for over an hour. Then suddenly pops above it, goes above, and then starts to move very sharply higher and goes to the top that I had drawn in as a left side, right side price tie match to the, that's bar symmetry, to the high of, the, of 823 on the E-mini, S&P E-mini, one minute chart at 41.27.75. And what does it do? It spikes up to what? 
twenty-seven seventy-five. The exact to the quarter to the quarter point. Uh, amazing. Um, and then it started. And I, I, I must admit that I was in this, and then I, 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 I gave it a little too much room, so I took a little bit of a loss. It wasn't looking real good. Took a little bit of a lot out. And I just haven't had a chance of doing the show for this bounce to the upside and failure pattern. And now we are down at 4107. And that's the reason why I say to subscribers, it's only the Dow that needs to make that leg D. Everything else is already done in the chap wave, what we like to look for. So within that context, are lower yields helping the market? So the TLT, here's another question I had. So the TLT is stuck in a range. See this weekly chart for the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF made a high in March of 2020 at 179, comes all the way down to 91.85 uh, back in October, bounces sharply and then just gets stuck in the rectangle. Well, a rectangle, if it's a short-term rect wide rectangle, that's one thing. But as it extends out, it just tells me that this is going to be stuck in a range for a little bit. The 200 period moving average of 108.54, if it's taken out, then you, it'll go to leg C above 108, 109.10. Uh, and that'll go to a leg C. Can I do that now? Yes, I'll do that now. If you don't mind, I'm just going to go to, uh, this is my chart that I often show. I always show on the weekends when I do my hour-long uh, video. So, folks, if you're interested in my chat wave from, uh, yeah, and the methodology as well as my newsletter, um, on on a weekend, as long as I'm in town, but I've actually done uh, yesterday. I had someone put in my uh, a Discord onto uh, uh, no, sorry, my um, Camtasia onto a different computer, and finally I'm going to be able to do. I hope be able to do my video, my weekend videos when I'm out of town, and I will be out of town in May. So am uh, I, and in uh, April. So I'm going to be do, I'm going to be needing it very much. So if you're looking at the TYX, that's the white 30-year T bond yield weekly chart. You can see it's being buried here, whereas before it was always nicely above the 10-year the for the 10-year brown or gold uh, TNX right there. The cyan is the five-year uh, FVX, and they were in sync like they should be. Yield, the 30 years above the 10, the 10 year T note yield is above the five year. All of a sudden, we got this mishmash ever since, uh, well, in, since 20, in late 22, 2022. So now we've gone the cup and handle formation that I, I, I dislike intensely, unless you get the lower of the cup, which is what I invest business daily works on very hard. That's one of the uh, prime uh, techniques that they use. If you get that, what, why, the reason why I love the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout, we haven't seen too many of those lately, uh, is that it goes, it, it breaks the left side high in leg C. That says you can go quite a bit high because you should still go to a D. In this case, what happens is it very, the Cup and Ladle says that you stalled at the left side high, and now you're making a cup formation, and if you break out of it, no matter how high you go, you almost always go back into the handle, which is exactly what's happening now. That's the reason why I say this is stuck in the range. Here's your midpoint-ish, somewhere around there, and I just think it's going to wiggle and waggle around here for a little while. Uh, I don't think it's breaking out or breaking down just yet. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm looking at. And if you look at Wood iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, that pullback, I always have these charts. So this is a weekly chart of the global iShares of the Timber and Forestry ETF telling you there's weakness, in, worldwide weakness. And this is telling you that the Philadelphia Housing Index has actually rallied really well and that yields probably aren't going to be breaking to the upside just yet because... Um, that's what the this is what this chart is saying on the weekly housing index. All right, enough with that. Let's get back to the story that I want to go uh, separate here. Uh, it's a big uh, yeah, I spoke about the SMHs being weak. I'm not happy about that. Uh, did the TLT? Um, oh. Uh, uh, wait a minute, you mean Joseph A. Banks is still around? I thought they were taken over, but I thought it was uh, Men's Warehouse. Or maybe they were part of Men's Warehouse. And they're still doing the one. I used to always laugh. It was like, buy one pair of socks and get two suits free. 
I mean, I don't know how they do, they stayed in business. Now, it, well, obviously, it wasn't that, but I'm just joking about it. I used to always joke about that. And yet they did fantastically, and then they were taken over. And then I think uh, Ben's Warehouse did terribly. After they didn't get acquired, but if they did, they are still standalone stores. Really? All right. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of T. TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, friends. Well, so, uh, the company, Joseph uh, A. Banks, Taylor Brand Company, is headquartered in Fremont, California. Its parent company, Taylor Brands, also owns K&G Fashion Superstores, Men's Warehouse, and Moore's Clothing for Men in Canada. Ah, oh, and now I remember on uh, going on de to Denim, I, I saw Joseph A. Banks, and I remember this is a while back. I said, oh, they're still around. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Yes, they are around, but they are owned by someone else. Okay, question about TD. I wouldn't touch this Toronto uh, Dominion. Uh, this is pulling back sharply at 58.29. Hold off for this. Let's, let's look at it again, maybe next week, Wednesday, just to see how it's holding. Another question came in. Can I look at the VIX? So make this as simple as you can. This is the most fraught time that we're looking at in a long time i've been very positive on certainly the dow and the other indices until they made those peak d's and e's and now we're going to be watching this closely the uh um vix is up at 99 cents and 99.19.99 the day is young a lot of things can happen if the vix index starts to move into the 20.35 the 14 period moving average uh that's one thing if in the next um Going into Monday and Tuesday of next week, I had mentioned, if the VIX goes into the 22s and we start to see the Dow down uh, uh, 
a triple digit or more, the S&P down 60 or more. Um, I think that that's, that's going to be a very serious thing. I can talk about it tomorrow when I do my show at 8 o'clock. Uh, one other question came in that I didn't see. Uh, where was it? Oh, no, 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 there. Uh, I did that, I did that, I did that. Uh, yes, I did the VIX, I did that, did that. I've got I've done almost everything that I needed to. And crude oil, I just want to see because the inventory came out. Uh, crude oil, yeah, it's just holding us down uh, 60 cents. So there, there's a lot to talk about tomorrow going into the following week because that's going to be, for me, one of the critical weeks coming up. Meantime, I think there's just enough residual strength for the Dow to go higher. The others will be dragged up a little bit, but I think we're getting into a pretty tricky time. Hold tight. Check out Mode Performer Daily Newsletter. And stay tuned for Ski Roads and the great programming coming up. See you tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time. Have a great day.